Hello everybody, Prince DeBerry here. We're back at Yacht Club because we haven't been to Alien Compass in far too long. And it is by far one of our favorite Disney table service restaurants. Yeah, so it's time to go back and find some direction. Yeah, it's been like a year and that's far too long for us. So be sure to subscribe and enjoy Alien Compass and come back for more food reviews. Otherwise, what are we going to do with ourselves? You heard the bell. I get a nice short double Saint double, double Jameson and ginger because Bear wouldn't let me splurge on a bottle of wine for like, you know, an extra 60, 70, 80, 90 doll hairs. He's right. That's beside the point. Oh, this is so good. Got a nice balance with the Jameson and the ginger. This is a four and a half out of five Jameson and ginger. This is how you make a Jameson and ginger. One of my, one of my mini rolls here is to act as the princess's personal Jimmy Cricket. Would we love to have $80 bottles of wine with every meal? Maybe. Do we need an $80 bottle of wine? I'm sure that none of you would agree with me, but probably not. So she, back to the tried true Jameson and ginger. The cocktail menu here isn't huge, it's like four specialty cocktails. They have a full bar next door, so they'll make you basically whatever you want. This is just normally your drink of choice. It's a nice balance of gin, ginger and Jameson. I you for a double. There's no harshness, because that really smooth. Harshness is what they're doing. Four and a half out of five plus. So here we have the Purple Mariner. I believe I've had this before. It's got gin in it. It's in a different glass than I remember. No. Maybe if you like gin, you'll like this. But for me, it's like a two out of five gins. This is not my jam. I don't know why Bear wore this. I think he wants to kill himself. Oof. I know there are some, not in this community, because everybody in this community loves us. Even you two people that are watching right now that aren't subscribed love us. Or at least you don't hate us. Uh, some people would say they were like shills. So we do this and we review this food and we just rate everything well. We can't hide these faces. We're not those people. So if we don't like something, you're most definitely going to hear about it. For both better and worse. Which means that sometimes we order cocktails, no sort of rhyme or reason. Not usually because I desire that cocktail, but because either I haven't reviewed it in a while or haven't reviewed it at all, I think you guys might find it interesting. Not because it was something I want to drink. And I don't, I'm not a huge lover of gin. I will drink it. But it, it, most of the times, it's not my jam. Now this looks like grape Kool-Aid. I know it has gin in it. That smell is not comforting. very strong. Like old fashioned level strong. You cannot miss the gin. You get a, you get a, a, a taste of what I believe to be purple. Uh, it's okay. It's gonna take me a while to drink it. A long while. But it's okay. If you like gin. If you don't like gin, avoid this drink with the plate. As it is, you get three out of five of us. Take back what I said about the purple beer. This is two. This is hard. This is probably the hardest I've had to drink in like a week. Mm. We have this beautiful veganized buffalo cauliflower with a vegan ranch dip. Now we have made this at home before. We will link the recipe in the description box. Here we go with this beautiful spiciness, and I'm dipping it in this lovely house-made vegan ranch. Oop, that I'm getting everywhere. Cheers to the community 
and to spice it up. This buffalo cauliflower was a catalyst to so many amazing buffalo cauliflower moments in my life at home and I cannot help but appreciate this for what it is. And this is one of our favorite restaurants on Disney property, so 5 out of 5, Princess City's item. You must come here and get this, especially if you like spicy things. It's like a 7 out of 10 on the heat scale. This is one of those dishes, I know that we've got a question a couple times, it's like, we try a lot of seasonal things, a lot of new menu changes. This is one item that's stuck around on the menu at Alan Compass for years. It continues to be one of our favorites. Uh, we learned how to make buffalo cauliflower at home just because of this dish, until we literally burned ourselves out both in taste buds and a uh, number of times that we ate that. Uh, absolutely no complaints. Even as many times as we tried it, different ways we tried to perfect this recipe, I don't know if we ever got as good as they are here at Alien Compass. We got close. You know, we definitely got close. But these are absolutely amazing. Ooh. Oh, oh, no, I got you. I got you, there we go. Mm. Told me that I can only eat this every day for a month. I'd do it. Four and a half out of five plus. It's close as good as I remember. Yes, I know. If you've been here for a while, you probably expected me to get the Parker House rolls. Again. Because I've probably eaten them like, I don't know, five or six times on this channel already. And while I do love the Parker House rolls, I usually mainly get them for the bacon jam and not the other dips. So it's really just bacon jam and rolls at the end of the day. So I thought for a change, I'd do a soup. Lobster and corn chowder. Usually there's a little dairy in it. So I did take a magic pill. And then you use cute little crackers on the side. Let's just dip the cracker first. Got a nice soupy consistency. There's definitely some chunks in there somewhere. See how it tastes just in the cracker. Mm. Wow. That's a big enough cracker. It almost be a biscuit. I could have thrown some shade there. I'm gonna withhold, just this one time. Get a taste of the actual soup here. Nice big chunks in here of lobster. Definitely lots of chunks of corn. Some green onions in here as well. I'm excited for this. Mm. Also some decent sized chunks of potato. It's nice and thick. Nice consistency. Um, it's like creamy without being overboard. Let the corn and the lobster shine through. Green onions and a nice touch. As far as soups go, I'm surprised. I was expecting it to be, oh, who am I kidding? We love, we love most of the things we come here in Elm but I'm gonna this four out of five plus. Here we have the plant-based protein bowl. We've got some um, Beyond sausage with a, a crema. We got quinoa. We got uh, sweet potato and broccolini. This bowl has definitely shrank since the last time we've been here. I'm just gonna get a sausage with some quinoa together. Okay, so I remember it. Nice sausage, nice um, lightly bland quinoa. The sauce is what really like brings it together. It's pretty decent. I'll give it like a three. 
out of five. And then we have this like sweet potato roast down here. Let's get a little, little bit of this. It just tastes like a, a sweet potato fry. There's really nothing special about it. And then there's a broccolini that you can get. No, you can also get this as a side. You don't necessarily have to eat this in the bowl. But it does come in the bowl. So, I'm getting this down here. Overall, I'm gonna give the bowl like a two and a half or three out of five. It's, it's average, it's healthy, it's okay. I think I would rather come here for breakfast than dinner though. And I really miss their old like sandwich that they used to have here. Really, you come here for the dessert, you come here for the buffalo cauliflower. You don't really come here for the entree. Now, what does not match the emittedness of the cauliflower is this protein bowl. This protein bowl has been on menu for a while. It hasn't really changed much except for the size. And I feel like they can do so much more than what they have. Um, especially given the spread on the menu, even not getting something off menu. You have the flatbreads, you have all sorts of vegetables. The Beyond Sauce with the quinoa is kind of like, we make some quinoa, keep it in the back. Here's the sausage and some, some broccoli. It feels almost like an afterthought, even though I know this has been on the menu for a while. I really like this dish, but we need something new. We need things. I definitely think it needs more sauce. Especially with the quinoa. I've had difficulties with quinoa in the past as far as like not being amount of flavor. Quinoa is not an easy thing to season. But it can be seasoned. I appreciate the sauce and the chives on the plant-based sausage. It does help. Um, sort of like hide the normal beyond taste. I feel like you can do something more. It's like that tomato-based sauce with just green onions in it. Um, it gives me like, I bought pasta and then a bottle of sauce vibes. But all in one bite with the sausage and the quinoa is decent. You're not gonna leave hungry, that's for sure. You have two and a half out of five points. It's for the poor help with sweet potato. A nice roast to it, a little bit of char on the end. This is quite good. Probably to me the bright spot of the dish is sweet potato. That three out of five pods. I really feel like they could rework this dish. But the sweet potato is the base without the quinoa. Something. That's for the broccolini. It's nice and roasted. A little bit of garlic on there. I do like my tree shaped vegetables. I know new trees roll. Two and a half out of five months. So here we are at Princess trying to convince me to eat another dish. It's like the worst kind of instigator when it comes to food. So I was looking to try something newer different we had had before. So they have this brick half chicken with lemon and then potatoes that have been sauteed in duck fat and then a bed of broccolini on the bottom. Plus, it's like lemon here on the top. I'm assuming it meant to squeeze this over the chicken. It does have a nice looking roast to it. Much better than you're gonna see from like a Costco rotisserie chicken or anything like that. And it smells pretty good. So, let's just cut into this. Alien Compass, if you ruin chicken for me, I'm gonna take back every nice thing I ever said about you. Which is a lot. Big and juicy. Nice color on the skin. Got some of those chives on there. Nice color to it. 
Cooked all the way through, thankfully. See how it tastes? Let's hope this is not a brick in my stomach. And I'm not usually one for lemon on chicken. But uh, that lemon sort of sets out the, the roast flavors. It's nice and juicy all the way through. It's good chicken. It's like a good classic no frills chicken, but it's good. Chicken on its own. Look at that three out of five plus. As for these potatoes roasted in duck fat. You roast one bird and you saute potatoes in another bird. It's just been duck all around. Mm -hmm. I can actually taste the duck. It leaves them a little bit mushy instead of crisp, but it makes it up with the flavor. And that, a three and a half out of five plus. And then buried beneath here, I just have my own little plate of the broccolini. Nice trees. It's either a tree or something from a Harry Potter movie. I like the crisp, there's nothing wrong. Unoffensive. Two and a half out of five claws. Overall, I'm giving the plate a solid three out of five claws. If you're hungry, it's a lot of food. I suggest you get this. Now, underneath the Tingling potatoes and the broccolini, I almost missed this pile of sauteed mushrooms. Dirt rooms, if you will. Now, there's really not a lot of them. They're sort of like hidden down here. Easy to miss if you uh, get cold. I figured they're on here, I should at least try. They probably could have stayed hidden. Because they were on the base of the plate, they're oily and very earthy. Like earthy, more earthy than normal potatoes. It's just like a squishy oily mix. One and a half out of five balls. So another successful ale and compass dinner. Yeah, it was it was good. Um, my favorite thing is still definitely the uh, buffalo cauliflower. I regret that, Jim. I'm still tasting that. Oh my gosh! In my mouth. Did he have the hardest time finishing that I did. ginger? I whined and complained the entire time. I'm so glad I got a JMO ginger, like for real. For I messed up. I really did. I was hard. I made a mistake, but I committed it to it. Happens. We commit to our mistakes. Yes, but this Ellen Compass is still one of our favorite places on the property. I would like to see some updates in the menu at some point. They have a couple more cocktails that aren't have gin in them. But I missed my uh, burger. It yeah. would be nice to have that back. But I need to know when was the last time you went to Ale and Compass. If you haven't met, I need you to tell me why in the comments below or any other place you think along Disney property that would do better than Ale and Compass. If there's anywhere else like San Francisco, that's always going to be a place to find us. Hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We'll see you soon. And like this video and if you don't comment bear's just gonna go around the world around the world oh you can't see the globe but around the world around the world around the world around the world you heard the girl